Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my full review of the Canon RF 85mm f2 macro, a short telephoto lens for the EOS R mirrorless system. Announced in July 2020, it's one of the more affordable lenses in the RF system, costing around $600 or pounds. The 85mm focal length and f2 aperture makes it perfect for portraits, while close focusing allows it to double up as a fairly respectable macro lens with 1 to 2 or half actual size magnification. Throw in optical stabilisation and you have a pretty compelling lens at a tempting price, and in this review I'll show how it performs for subjects near and far, and also how it compares to alternative 85mm lenses. Canon owners certainly aren't short of 85mm options, in fact the RF 85mm f2 becomes the third 85 from Canon in the native RF mount, joining a pair of earlier f1.2 models. These are considerably higher end lenses though costing $2,700 or $3,000 for the DS version with a slightly softer bokeh effect. At the more affordable end, Samyang now offers an 85mm 1.4 with autofocus in the native RF mount for roughly the same price as the Canon 85 f2 macro, although sadly they weren't interested in joining this comparison when I asked them. If you're happy to adapt an EF mount lens, there's also Canon's EF 85 1.8, EF 85 1.4L, or 85 1.2L, along with Tamron's 85 1.8 VC and Sigma's 85 1.4R. Plus we can all hope that Sigma starts offering its latest mirrorless lenses in the RF mount sooner rather than later. So plenty of options out there, but in this review I'm going to directly compare the RF 85mm f2 against the high-end RF 85mm 1.2 as well as the much older EF 85mm 1.8 for portraits, close-ups, landscapes, bokeh, rendering, focusing and video. Everything you need to know to choose the 85 for your EOS R system. Here's the RF 85mm f2 in the middle, joined by the RF 85mm f1.2 on the left, a much heftier lens that's more than double the weight and over four times the price. Meanwhile on the right is the aging but still popular EF 85mm f1.8 from 1992, which is still selling almost three decades later for around $400 or pounds. That makes it roughly two thirds the price of the 85 f2 macro. Side by side it's shorter, but to use it on an EOS R body you'll need to fit it with an adapter, which makes it almost the same size. Of these three lenses, only the RF 85mm f2 in the middle sports optical stabilisation and close focusing. Meanwhile the standout benefit of the 85 1.2 is of course its much brighter aperture and opportunities for shallower depth of field effects, and as an L lens the build quality is also better and it comes with a lens hood. Meanwhile, the 85mm f1.8 wins the nostalgia vote, it's cheaper to buy new, there's more second hand options available, and some may prefer its softer rendering compared to those ultra crisp modern lenses. The RF 85mm f2 is 78mm in diameter, 91mm long, weighs 500 grams, and has a 67mm filter thread. There's three switches on the barrel, including a three position focus limiter and one to enable the optical stabilisation. In the middle is a smooth motor assisted manual focusing ring and at the end a customizable control ring. Like all RF lenses it may lack the physical focusing window of older EF models like the 85 1.8 but the broader rotation, the throw of that manual focusing ring, the fact that it's smoother and that there's electronic feedback in the viewfinder or on the screen makes it much easier to manually focus. Meanwhile the ET77 lens hood is available as an optional extra for about 50 bucks. Annoyingly, lens hoods still aren't supplied as standard on Canon's non-L lenses, and as a quick correction to my earlier RF 600 and 800 review, the hoods on those models turned out to be optional accessories. Unsurprisingly, as a more affordable model in the series, the RF 85mm f2 is not sealed against dust and moisture. Neither was the old 85mm 1.8, but the higher end RF 85mm 1.2 lenses are weather sealed, and as L models they also come with lens hoods. Right, now for the image quality comparisons, starting with portraits, and all of the pictures I'm going to show you in this review were taken with an EOS R5 running version 1.1.1 firmware. The latest EOS R bodies make portraiture easy with face and eye detection, but as you'll see, the three lenses all delivered different results. Here's the RF 85mm f2 at f2, and now the RF 85mm f1.2 at 1.2, and now the EF 85mm 1.8 at 
Placing them side by side with the 85mm f2 macro flanked by the RF85 1.2 on the left and the EF85 1.8 on the right reveals the higher contrast of the two much newer RF models and of course the much shallower depth of field of the f1.2 model on the left. The rendering style between the 85 f2 and 85 1.8 on its right actually looks quite different with the older model lacking the contrast and bite but with a fairly attractive softness to its bokeh. There's no right or wrong here, just the effect you prefer. Taking a closer look though reveals a problem with my old 85 1.8 with noticeably softer details that look blurred compared to the much crisper RF models. Now I retook this shot multiple times but failed to get an improvement when using the R5's face night detect autofocus. Switching to manual focus allowed me to achieve a fractionally better result which I'm now showing here but it remains less crisp than the newer RF models to its left. Now there may be an issue with my own 85 1.8 sample but remember this lens is almost 30 years older from a time of film SLRs and even a better behaved sample if available is unlikely to perform anywhere near as well as a modern lens. It was simply never designed for this kind of resolution. Just before moving on here's another set of portraits where I'm stood a bit closer. First with the RF 85 f2 and now the 85 1.2 and finally the old 85 1.8. I experienced the same focusing issue with the EF model so I'm just showing you the manually focused version which was a little bit better than the autofocus shot. And now for all three side by side where the rendering in the background is again the biggest difference. The 1.2 on the left is obviously the best if you want to completely obliterate the background with blur but all three lenses are more than capable of effective subject separation. Zooming in for a closer look tells the same story as before though with both new RF models outperforming the old EF lens as you'd expect. Also notice the focus fall off on my beard and hat. Again the EF version looks a tad out of focus here but this was the best result I could achieve on multiple attempts. Again my sample may be at fault and your mileage may vary but old lenses designed for film SLRs are unlikely to match modern lenses on high resolution digital bodies. The rendering of a lens designed for portraiture is very important so in my next test I'm going to compare the three lenses for bokeh blobs and as I explain the setup I'll briefly run through an aperture sequence on the 85mm f2 from f2 to f8. For this test I position the camera at the closest distance that all three lenses could focus on the star ornament. Now both the RF 85 1.2 and the old EF 85 1.8 share a similar minimum focusing distance of about 85 centimeters. So that's what I've used here. Oh, and I manually focus the EF lens to be sure. The RF 85 mm F2 can get much closer focusing down to 35 centimeters. And I'll be showing more of what you can do with that in just a moment. But first let's compare the three lenses side by side starting with the RF 85 mm 1.2 in isolation at f1.2 and f1.4 where it's of course showing the biggest bokeh blobs. The old EF 85 mm joins in at f1.8 and now you can see all three lenses at f2. At first glance there's not much to tell them apart at f2 but look closer and you'll notice the effect of the aperture blades on the 1.2 and 1.8 models versus the 85 f2 which of course is operating wide open here so it has the most rounded edges to its bokeh blobs. All three share a fairly similar rendering style though with none really taking the lead on outlining or onion ringing. Do you have a preference yet? In the spirit of fairness here's all three again all close to f2.8 in order to compare the impact of their aperture blade systems. Here the octagonal shape of the old EF 85mm aperture blades becomes quite apparent while the RF 1.2's 9 blades are a little more discreet. But impressively I'd say the RF f2 model retains the rounded shape here. And finally let's compare them all at their maximum apertures showing the greatest potential for blob size without the aperture blades getting in the way. While all three share similar rendering styles as well as oval shaped blobs in the corners it's unsurprisingly the RF 1.2 on the left that's delivering the largest blobs when wide open. Now I expected the F2 and F1.8 models to be fairly similar here but the older EF model is delivering visibly bigger blobs. Again do you have a preference between them? As mentioned earlier though the RF 85mm f2 has the benefit of being able to focus more than twice as close as the other two. So for comparison here it is again shot from 85 centimeters which is the closest the 1.2 and 1.8 models would focus. But now here's the f2 from its closest focusing distance of 35 centimeters where obviously the subject and blobs are considerably bigger. So it seems as good a time as any to take a closer look at the macro capabilities of the 85 f2 literally. 
Let's start with a ruler that I photographed with the RF 85mm f2 from as close as it would focus, where you can confirm its 1 to 2 magnification. This ratio means the lens can reproduce the subject at half its actual size on the sensor. So given that the R5's full frame sensor measures 36mm across, the lens should be able to fill it with a subject measuring 72mm across. Here I managed 71mm on the ruler, which essentially confirms its capability. Now here's a bunch of shots I took with the lens at or close to its minimum focusing distance. According to traditional definitions, the term macro should be reserved for lenses that can achieve one-to-one -one magnification, reproducing a subject on the sensor at actual size. But while the RF 85mm f2 falls short of this capability, you can still enjoy some pretty usable and high quality results at one-to-two magnification. You may also recall the earlier RF 35mm 1.8 also allows 1 to 2 macro shooting, but from a closer distance of 17 centimeters versus 35 centimeters on this model here, which makes the 85mm much easier to use without casting shadows or disturbing insects at close range. Of course, the decision between them is also influenced by which focal length is more useful to you for general use, but for close ups alone, I found the 85 more practical. If you own an R5 body, you can also deploy focus bracketing for stacking in software later. It's also fun to deploy macro for video, so here's a couple of clips I filmed in 4K HQ with the EOS R5 with the RF 85mm f2. You have to watch for wobbling, even with IS and IBIS from this distance, but the effect can still be attractive. You've seen how the 85 f2 compares for portraits and bokeh blobs, but what about distance subjects focused at infinity? To find out, I shot this scene with all three lenses across their aperture range. And don't worry, I wasn't drunk when I took it, it's angled like this so that fine details go right into the corners, otherwise you'd just be looking at close-ups of a featureless sky. So here's the RF 85mm f2 wide open at f2, where it's of course very sharp in the middle as expected, but also impressively crisp right into the far corners. And remember, this was shot wide open at f2. For comparison, here's all three lenses, all operating at f2 here, and now for a closer look at the middle of each image where they actually all look pretty similar. Looking really closely reveals the old EF85 1.8 to be a little softer than the others, while the 85 f2 is the slightest bit crisper than the 1.2 model. Moving to the corners though, and as you might expect, the modern optics of the two RF models easily outperform the 30 year old EF1.8. Now to be fair, the EF lens can essentially match this sharpness in the corners if you stop it down to between f5.6 and f8 as seen here, but if you want maximum corner sharpness right out of the gate, you'll need those new RF models. As a final comparison, here's the corners of all three lenses when they're all wide open at their maximum apertures. Note the RF 1.2 on the left is overexposed here as the top shutter speed of 8,000th of a second on the R5 just wasn't sufficient for a balanced exposure at f1.2 and 100 ISO under broad daylight. But you can still make out the details and I'd say it's performing very well even wide open. Unsurprisingly, my old EF 1.8 is worst here, but it's important to remember if your subject is mostly towards the middle, surrounded by a blurry background, then corner sharpness isn't particularly important. Just before moving on, here's a couple of landscape shots I took with the RF 85mm f2 lens. It's easy to assume it's only designed for portraits and macro photography, but it also works well for slightly tighter urban and landscape views. And as you've seen, it also delivers very sharp results even wide open, which, coupled with the optical IS, makes it great for shooting in dimmer conditions too. Moving on to autofocus, you'll notice the RF 85mm f2's inner barrel extends as it focuses on close subjects, and the STM motors are quite audible, at least when taking photos. They're slower and much quieter when filming video though. How fast is it in practice? Here's the view of the RF 85mm f2 on an EOS R5 body set to a single AF area. The STM motors aren't normally as fast as USM in Canon's lineup, but here it looks and feels quite snappy, refocusing between the subject and the background. For comparison, here's the RF 85mm f1.2, which does have a USM focusing motor, although perhaps any benefit is consumed by the larger glass elements, as the focusing speed in practice here looks and feels quite similar, maybe even a fraction slower. Oh, and if you close this lens to f2, it performs at the same speed due to the way that the camera drives the lenses for autofocus. But for good measure, here's the old EF 85mm 1.8, a which, thanks to its USM motor and also a very short rotational throw, is actually the fastest model here, not to mention the quietest of the three in this test. 
It's particularly impressive too as a 30 year old lens adapted to a different mount here and a reassuring demonstration of legacy models in action. There is however one caveat to mention on the EF85 1.8 beyond the quality issues I showed you earlier and that's a reduced burst speed on the R5 and R6 and that's indicated by the flashing white H plus icon on the screen or in the viewfinder. In my test the top speed I managed on the R5 with the EF85 mil 1.8 was 6.8 frames per second versus achieving the maximum 12 frames per second with the RF 85mm f2. Remember for the fastest bursts on the R5 and R6 you will not only need to be using native RF lenses but also a battery with plenty of charge. Next let's have a look at image stabilization and here's the view of the RF 85mm f2 on the R5 with all stabilization disabled. To enable IS, flick the switch on the barrel which will also activate the sensor shift IBIS, so you're looking at both running together here. Canon claims the IS alone is good for 5 stops, enhanced to 8 alongside IBIS on the R5 or R6. On the R5 in my tests I managed 4-6 to six stops in practice. I also tried the lens on the EOS RP which doesn't have IBIS and I managed 3 stops when using optical image stabilization alone. Out of interest, here's the view from the RF 85mm 1.2 on the R5 without any stabilization, and now with IBIS alone, as this lens does not have optical IS. In my tests, I achieved four stops of compensation using IBIS alone, but needed a fast shutter on the unstabilized RP. And finally, the old EF 85mm 1.8 on the R5 without any stabilization, and now with IBIS alone, as again this lens doesn't have any optical IS. This time I achieved 4 stops of compensation with the R5 and of course again needed a fast shutter on non-stabilised bodies like the RP. So while I experienced less compensation than quoted for the RF 85mm f2, the built-in IS still allowed it to deliver steadier results than the two unstabilised lenses whether using a body with IBIS or not. As a final example, here's some video of the Brighton Seafront I filmed with the R5 in 4K HQ without IBIS or optical IS enabled and now with the switch activated for both technologies working together. Again, there's no way to select one or the other. I found it was possible to handhold video with the RF 85mm f2 quite effectively on the R5. Here's another handheld clip, this time using the face and eye detection for birds with one of Brighton's seagulls. This was filmed at f2 to give you some idea of the potential blurring on the distant background. Now at this point in my reviews, I'd normally do some kind of vlog, but 85mm is too long for handheld use. So just before my final verdict, here's some tripod based footage of face and eye detection on the three lenses. The Canon RF 85mm f2 is a fairly affordable short telephoto lens for the EOS R mirrorless system that performs double duty for portraits and close-ups. The f2 focal ratio may not deliver as much background blur as faster models but there's still plenty of potential for shallow depth of field effects while the face and eye detection on the EOS R bodies makes it easy to grab focused portraits wherever the subject is on the frame. Like the RF 35mm 1.8 before it, there's no weather ceiling, the lens hood is not included and the macro capabilities may be limited to 1-2 to two magnification or half actual size but that's still sufficient for most people and the results can look great from a more practical distance than the 35mm. Throw in optical stabilisation that benefits bodies with or without IBIS and you have a very compelling lens for the money. The biggest issue is the wealth of alternative 85s to choose from, including a bunch from Canon itself, but the RF 85mm f2 represents a step up in quality, close focusing and potential burst speed over the old EF 85 1.8 and is a lot more affordable than the faster 85s in Canon's range. If you're desperate for an 85mm 1.4 at a more affordable price, look to Samyang or Sigma. But the combination of great quality optics even when wide open, attractive rendering, useful close-ups and optical IS make the Canon RF 85mm f2 a no-brainer for EOS R owners. I'm also pleased that Canon's introducing more affordable models in the native RF lineup. So like the RF 35mm 1.8, it comes highly recommended. Right, that's it for another review, which only leaves me to kindly request a follow if you're not already subscribed to my channel. And as always, if you found it really useful and would like to support my work, there's links below to treat me to a coffee or perhaps to treat yourself to my in-camera photography book or some Camera Labs merchandise. 
Let me know what you think of the lens in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.